Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Philanthropy Friday. Very excited to have you here. This is a forum that we have every other Friday where we focus and profile either individuals who are making a difference in the philanthropy space or people who are inspiring us to do better or look at products, strategies, and, and other ways for all of us to enhance our brands and our legacies helping clients and charities that we're working with. I'm Mark Halpern. I'm the CEO of wealthinsurance.com. I've been a professional advisor now for 32 years and we work in three different areas. One is in estate planning, so helping primarily business owners, entrepreneurs, incorporated professionals, and affluent families make sure that their financial architecture and their financial furniture actually aligns with today's reality. And we like to think that most of the time it's not. Uh, obviously, this requires a lot of attention. The second area that we're involved with is tax minimization strategies. We specialize in tax exempt insurance um, to help people preserve their estates or optimize it or keep their taxes for themselves. And the third area that we're involved with is philanthropy, which is really helping clients create legacies for their families, often just by converting taxes into charity. And we've been very successful over the last two years. We've created $120 million of charity. And I don't know how much we've created by helping other people create, but certainly we love to hear about success stories from the people that we've been certainly working with. What I've learned in my 32 years, certainly in this in industry, is that there are some excellent planners out there, accountants, lawyers, etc., who've done some amazing planning up until this point, the best of the best, but there's an entire shelf above it dealing with philanthropy, strategic philanthropy to mitigate taxes and create legacies that people are really not talking about. And unless they're speaking about it, their clients are not going to know about that. And also the charities who are also uh, represented on this call, we find that their experience has always been about uh, collecting money for current gifts to keep the lights on and maybe having a capital campaign every two to three years. But the only thing they haven't done really is built up the area of planned legacy giving. And we see it not only as an opportunity for charities, but a big responsibility. If we're not speaking to charities about that and helping them to uh, help donors create gifts in the most cost and tax effective way possible, then I really feel that we're doing a disservice. So it's really important these Philanthropy Fridays are opportunities for all us to learn together. Now, just Two last things before we get started with our, our great comp, our conversation today. Uh, we're on a bit of a mission. You know, everybody's got their why, like Simon Sinek, and they have their mission. Um, our mission is threefold. We want to ensure that all professionals in Canada, lawyers, accountants, insurance, and investment advisors, all have included strategic philanthropy in their clients' estate planning. So it's not something that we want to ignore. The second thing that we have a goal of is we want to be in a Canada that people understand what insurance does, not just what it is. A lot of people know what it is, but they don't understand what it can do to create transformational charity. And then the third thing that we're very passionate about is we're trying to create a national community of 100 allied professional advisors and charities that if everybody's creating $10 million and we've got 100 of them, that's a billion dollars. And that could be created every single year. And it's not a pie in the sky. It's kind of like crowdfunding. And what gets me going, my why, is that I believe in something called tzedakah. Tzedakah is a Hebrew word that's mistranslated often as charity. But what it really means is righteousness or justice. We have an obligation to give back if we've been blessed, which in Canada we certainly have. So there are two ways to give. I can either write a check myself or I can show other people how to write checks, in which case we can create way more money and there's a lot of merit in doing that. So I appreciate everybody joining with us today. We have a great topic. Uh, the topic is uh, 10 ways for uh, professional advisors in particular uh, to become entrepreneurial philanthropic advisors. Now, this is not going to be just relegated to advisors. 
we want advisors to know this, certainly for their own professional practices. And I'm very fortunate to have a couple of great uh, examples of that. And we'll talk about some other advisors who have incorporated philanthropy into their practice. But the idea is if we can take this information and share it with our business owner, entrepreneurial clients, they can truly understand that they could make a huge impact with very, very little heavy lifting. And why is that? Because we've identified five types of givers in the market place, five types. The first person is somebody who gives, but they want to remain completely anonymous. Don't put my name anywhere. If you do, I'll never give you another penny. We know people like that. The second type of people who give want to give because they want to encourage others to give. So they sort of set an example. The third type of giver are ones that are looking for some immortality. They want their name on a building or a chair at a university or whatever the case might be. They're doing it to be able to show their children and grandchildren that mom and dad and granddad were were very very generous the fourth do it for tax reasons and we're going to show you what are the tax benefits that you're probably not all aware of and but interestingly enough they say the statistics say that two-thirds of decisions on giving to charity are based on people's passions and only 13 percent are based on on tax so it's not the tax tail that's wagging the dog it's really the passion so if we can show people take their passion and show them how they can do things more cost and tax efficiently with the tax act, then they're going to be interested. But the last person who likes to give charity, who, who likes it, is they know that it's good for business. People like to deal with people who are charitable, not just in writing checks, but people who are investing their time and energy, volunteering or doing great things for organizations. And that's really what we want to get at today. And hopefully uh, with our guests, find out a little bit more about them and take you through some planning ideas that I think will be very, very beneficial. So I've got just a couple of things to get us started in terms of like uh, setting the runway, I'd say the important things are, did you know? This is a very important point that most people don't know, including the professionals out there. Number one is life insurance can be owned and paid for by a charity, a private foundation, or a donor advised fund. That means money you've already put into your private foundation or donor advised fund, that money can be used to acquire insurance where the insurance is owned by the charity, it's paid for by the charity and the charity is the beneficiary. So we'll talk about that a little later on when it comes to things like Canada Life's new introduction to the charitable insurance space called My Par Gift. And we spoke about that on an earlier LinkedIn Live. Next thing, charitable donations in any given year can be used to, used to reduce or mitigate up to 75% of net taxable income. And those receipts can be carried forward for up to five years. That means if somebody owes $100,000 and they give $200,000 at the highest tar tax bracket, that they'll get a $200,000 tax receipt that will mitigate $100,000 of that income. But because they can only use it for 75%, so they can use it for 75,000, that means the additional 25,000 would be carried forward for up to five years. The less known thing, is that in the year of death, charitable donations can be used to mitigate up to 100% of terminal estate taxes, including being able to go back the previous year as well. That means if somebody owes a dollar of tax and they give $2 to charity, that dollar of tax now becomes a dollar of charity. So imagine if somebody has a million dollar tax bill and they leave a $2 million insurance policy that they acquire for pennies, or in a cash flow neutral way, that $2 million goes to charity, the million dollars of tax becomes a million dollars of charity and everything is great. On all of our mouths or all of our minds the last little while is from the last budget, there are proposed changes to AMT alternative minimum tax. We did a session on this with Ali Spinner two weeks ago. I really highly recommend that you review that again, but it's really closing the goalposts and actually going to make it much more uh, less less um, um, uh, beneficial to donate things like appreciated securities, where right now the inclusion rate is zero. So right now, if you give stock or mutual funds or uh, ETFs of a non-registered nature to charity, 
you get a charitable receipt for the full market value and there's no capital gains tax. That's going to be affected uh, going into January 2024, as well as uh, other things like capital gains. So it's going to kind of dampen or slow down, I believe, the whole area of charitable giving. So we really need to do something about that. We can hopefully still get it amended or changed. But the good news is that there's no AMT on death. So there's no alternative minimum tax on death. Therefore, this idea of including strategic philanthropy in estate planning is still something that's very, very valuable. So how do you do it? All of us on this call, we should be looking at ways to create what we call accidental philanthropists, not just for ourselves, but for our clients as well. And what is that? There are two types of philanthropy, two types of people. There are people who give because it's part of their DNA. And then there are people who don't. They just never had that education. When those people realize they have a choice where their taxes go and their money, that they can give it to charity as opposed to giving it to the CRA, they suddenly become accidental philanthropists. And the people who are already giving can now give it more at the same amount of cost or give it the same cost or give the same amount at lesser of a cost. So here are just some of the accidental philanthropists that everybody should be considering in their own book of business, in your own clients, because most of the people who are joining us today are actually professional advisors. But you know, here's just a group, I would say at the very high end, anybody widows, divorcees, or singles are very, very much people to speak to because they don't have a spouse upon death to roll over all their assets to on a spousal tax-free rollover, which means they're one incident away from a very large taxable disposition and they have a choice where those taxes go. Anybody that you know has had a liquidity event or will be having a liquidity event, selling a business or investment real estate or appreciated securities, that's the year they have their biggest payday. It's also the year they have their biggest tax bill. And it's the year they can be their most generous to charity to mitigate that tax. With the new AMT rules, it will impact that. So please, if you want, encourage clients, if they're going to have a liquidity event, they should do it in 2023 to take full advantage. Anybody that has done an estate freeze or will be doing an estate freeze, most people know that you can donate public appreciated securities, but most people don't realize that you can donate private company shares, frozen shares, and there's ways to strategize and do that as well, which you should know about. Anybody that has tax bills in, in April where they've got a big, uh, you know, uh, pregnant capital gains in their non-registered securities, donate them in 2023 to pay less taxes in 2024. Any of your clients who have a foundation or a donor advised fund, or they have old insurance policies they no longer need, or they'll have an estate tax bill on death, or they want to leave a bequest in their will to charity already. Those are all people that you could be leveraging to create more money for charity for them. All it takes is giving some attention to it. And so today, what we're going to do, though, is we uh, are going to talk about 10 steps to help people become entrepreneurial philanthropic advisors. And I'm really, really pleased before we get started to introduce a couple of great, great, great guests that I have with me today. And, uh, and they're very, very, very good friends as well, that we've been involved in a, in a lot of different uh, planning together. And um, maybe we'll start with uh, Anthony Gordon. Uh, Anthony is a, a lawyer by background, originally from Jamaica, married to a lovely, lovely woman, Edith. And uh, he is uh, very much involved in charity since he came here to Canada. Also involved with helping uh, new immigrants to Canada uh, in terms of planning to make their sort of runway much easier. And, uh, and he can share with us a, a few things that he's doing. We also have Cece, uh, who's a dear friend from, from advisory services, correct? CC advisory money strategies. Yes. Thank you. Advisory money strategies. And CC is uh, probably, you know, you meet lots of good people in the world, but CC is like right up there in terms of happy and positive and helping people. Both Anthony and CC are actually on my uh, professional advisory board at Humber River Hospital Foundation, where I'm the chair of that board. So we work very closely together. But the other thing that they have in common is they're part of our Power of Platinum 
uh, mentoring and coaching program that I have with Jim Ruda. And they've been superstars there adapting a lot of things and really creating charity in their practices, but also for people that are in their lives. So maybe just just start, we'll, we'll take five minutes with each of you guys, and then we're going to go through these 10 steps if it's okay. Okay, Anthony. So you know, you and I were speaking just before. Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about what you do vis-a-vis your practice and how you've integrated philanthropy. Okay, thanks, Mark. So uh, what I do is I, I'm a financial planner. So I work with professionals and business owners. Uh, I work with a lot of lawyers because me being a lawyer, it's a natural uh, natural connection in that respect. Um, and in terms of philanthropy, so even before. I start. I took it on from a financial advisory aspect. Uh, I had been a part of a different charity, a charity called Rescue, uh, who helped at-risk youths. And um, so essentially what I did was I mentored and I worked with a lot of the kids there. I did financial literacy. I spoke with a lot of the kids. And um, then you had a master class with Jim Ruda. <laughs> I saw your master class with Jim Ruda, and I saw what was available in terms of the planning aspect of it. And I always kind of knew that there was something there with philanthropy and we, you know, as a data collection aspect of it, you asked about charities that you donate to. But I really didn't get the, the big scope and the, the perspective of it until I thought that. So now, once I got that information, being part of Platinum and, and plugging in and, and, of course, following all the information, in terms of working with clients, what I do is that is an integral part of estate planning. Not only when I work with clients, but I also do a lot of talks. And I love, most of my talks are estate planning based. And when I do those estate planning, some financial planning, but estate planning, charity is a pillar of that conversation. And it always interests a lot of people because I think at heart, most people are generous and want to give. So when they discover all these benefits, it really opens up the conversation. Um, and in terms of working with clients, you know, you do the data collection, we're putting a plan together. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. When you say accidental philanthropists, one client I'm working with is a single a single a single man and um he has no real beneficiaries and he's thinking okay i have all these assets what would i what should i possibly what what can i do what, where am i going to leave them and i mentioned charity and funny enough he's very much um um involved with a charity but the thought hadn't even come to his mind so just having the conversation opens up that huge perspective and just as an advisor i see you get you grasp it. You no, know, you start having conversations with clients, so the clients get to see it at a whole different level. And then a lot of times, to your point, they just see the generosity of giving, and then they go, oh, and by the way, from a tax perspective, these are the benefits. And they go, oh, I had no clue. So having the conversations and just being um, wide-eyed and open to what's possible, it really opens the door. And I'm sure, Anthony, you'd say that if you did not have these conversations with these individuals, and I know you work with business owners as well, yeah. chances are they would not have this on their radar, correct? It wouldn't, because that's the thing. I speak with someone who works and participates in a charity, and to him, that wasn't it, it wasn't even a thought. And then when I brought it up and I mentioned, okay, these are the possible ways that you could contribute to the charity, they go, oh, that's amazing. I never thought about that. And this is somebody who's involved in a charity on a weekly basis uh, is involved in a charity. And then I thought about, okay, also your benefits, because he has a pretty sizable estate, um, a lot of properties and stuff like that. Your, your benefits to this. And they go, oh, they're additional. I didn't even realize there are tax benefits. I was just thinking about the generosity aspect of it, but sure. If that's an opportunity too, then you know I'll piggyback on that. So to your that's point, it's generosity and then the benefits kind of kicking after. And and do you find that it makes you more referable as a result, Anthony? Like people want to do business with you? It's huge because in terms of values, I mean, if we're gonna be completely transparent. There's so, so and not everyone has people think of financial planners a lot of times as you know individuals who want to sell something, but you know, that context. So when you're coming from a context of values of okay this is possible and this is all the impact that you could have generational uh this is how it could impact your legacy when you talk about things like that re which really hit home to a lot of individuals then the first thing they're going to do is they say hey, you speak to the friend and say hey i just had the most interesting conversation did you know that this and this you could do this and they go are you sure and they go okay just let me the person give me could i get a person just to have a conversation so it, it at least opens the dialogue and over time, you know, it leads to additional things, but it definitely is contagious once people understand what's there and what's available. 
Beautiful, Anthony. I know I gave a presentation to a, a hospital foundation board uh, not long ago, and the chairperson, who was a lay person at the very end, said, you know, Mark, I'm, I'm a pretty successful person, and I'm, I'm reasonably intelligent as well, but how come I only knew about 5% of all the things you talked about today, and how come our donors don't know about these things? And, you know, that's more the reality and the not the exception. That's actually kind of the rule. So you're amazing. Anthony, what you're doing, you should continue doing well and and being an example in our industry and being an example in the community. And I'm very grateful to have you around as part of our Power of Platinum program. Has that been helpful for you? It's huge. And to your point, to piggyback on your last statement, I have a master's in taxation law lawyer. In the past, I've drafted wills, a lot of estate planning stuff, CFP, CLU, CEA, a lot of it. But in terms of the depth and all the different um, potential ways to help clients, I don't think anyone has really put it together beyond what I've seen. I know there's a, um, the MFA designation, which probably has everything laid out. But outside of that designation, um, I think you're the only person I've seen that has gone to great lengths of laying out all the different ways that you could contribute. So it really is not information that's just easily accessible or available is what I'm saying. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, we should continue to have lots of success and continue to share all your wins. And I appreciate having you around. Thank you. CC Chakrabarti, my dear friend. Uh, sure. I would love CC. First of all, it's great to have you here. And when I thought of somebody who's integrated philanthropy into the professional practice, you were one of the first people that came to my mind because you've done some amazing things at the hospital and stepped up. And I just wanted, wanted you to share with people. Tell us a little bit about why you got involved with this stuff and maybe give us an idea of what you've been doing. And then we'll take it from there. Absolutely. So thank you very much, Mark, for giving me this platform to speak. I am pretty young in this practice because our practice is just about two years old, but I've been in the industry on a different side, being a manager and having managed a business unit for a career shop for well over two decades. So as they say, it's what you learn after you think you know, you know everything. <laughs> and uh, there's another Chinese proverb which says, when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. So I was lucky enough to have uh, been brought into the business by none other than Jim Ruta. And having heard Mark for over the years, Mark, you've been an icon from whom we've been learning and trying to adopt. And here I get a chance to meet up with you. And if I may just talk a little bit about our personal interaction. I walked up to Mark, I think about a year and uh, a little over a year ago and said, Mark, I want to learn from you. And Mark gave me the name of uh, a book written by Frank Bettiger, How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success. In selling. And in selling. And I thought, hey, I need to get this book. After having gone through a couple of chapters, I said, this is familiar. But I anyway finished the book and then I realized I already had two copies which I had gone through underlined, but that was many years ago. But I want to tell uh, publicly that I want to thank Mark for that because it's you. I moved from a transition of I want to do something with meaning. And I'm not sure how many people have had the chance to read, if you haven't, Viktor Frankl's book on man's search for meaning. Mm -hmm. So classic that's, that's been a classic and it's because when you find your why and exactly to what mark said because we all have our professions and i'm sure i'm not the only shop out there there's going to be lots of it but what has worked for me is always when you know your why and that why is going to transcend many things so i've been more of a giver and what i've found with this charitable giving is I can give like Mark and Jim already in power of platinum. What I look at is they are giving back the knowledge much that we do for our clients and helping them do, you know, strategic plan giving in terms of giving away your money to build a legacy. I think there are people and Mark and, and Jim are excellent examples of doing just that for our community, for the advisor community. 
Thank you, Cece. I, I really appreciate that. And, and it's, you know what, it's, they say, you know, as you said, the student is ready, when the student's ready, the teacher will come, time means yeah. everything. I love the fact that you've integrated philanthropy with all your advisors and you're getting them all involved in volunteering and also in education through Power of Platinum, et cetera. But I just want you to just quickly speak about what you've done over at the Humber River Hospital Foundation. Sure. You've, you've become quite iconic there in a very short time. We're very proud of all you've been doing. Sure. So, so I'll just, uh, before I start that, we followed Mark's example on we want to keep a target. So our target for this year was about 25 million to start raising for charities. So for every charity. And so far, we've been able to raise about five. So we have some stuff going, but these are all charitable donations of life insurance. Now, what Mark was talking to is last year when Avatar, the movie was released, and actually, it was Anthony and Yannick who were speaking about it, and they were talking about Avatar, the movie. Then I got a brilliant idea. I said, look, everyone at the hospital has been working so hard for us, and at every hospital. But we were involved with Humber River Hospital, so why not do an event for them? And as a thank you, you know, so rather than go and ask, why don't we give to them? So what we thought and there were some skeptics amongst us who said i don't know if people will line up but the movie which was supposed to start at 11 o'clock we had lineups from 8 30 and it was a packed event and uh, you know what the foundation couldn't handle the pressure but it was a very very good event and with that we already got our first donor who donated a million dollars worth of life insurance to them wow and I myself became a donor because they say charity begins at home. And we learned about the donation of appreciated securities as well as donor advised funds. And we started putting them into practice. That's so, that, that, sorry. That, that, no, 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 keep going, keep going. You're doing a great job. It's, it's, now, it's just that because I want to integrate this with another thing is they always say the purpose of life is to find your gift but the meaning of life is to give it away. So this, this thing, if most advisors who are listening in, this is an area, if you think you've, you know, you've kind of lost passion with the business, I think this is an area which rekindles everything you'll see. You'll see other people, you'll see your clients, their eyes lighting up. And as to your point, and most of you have seen that it's, you know, oh, we can do this. And I know there's a lot of people who are with the ultra high net worth and all. For us, our mantra now is making giving simple. We are trying to work with the mass market, showing them the smaller ways because there's the intent and the ability. Yes, the rich already have their way, but what about the other people? What, what about, so there's a space for everyone and what we are trying to do is make giving simple. So that's our message. It's fantastic. And, and, and I think the key there is you don't have to be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates to be a philanthropist, right? You can Absolutely. be just a regular civilian income, double income earner, RSP house. I mean, there's so many ways just, and as you said, it really does turn people on uh, when, you know, like we want to talk to people about their wills and their tax bills and, and their insurance and, but they don't want to always talk about that. I find right philanthropy is like the thin edge of the wedge to get in front of people to talk to them about something that's more meaningful once they find out that you care more than what you know then they also want to find out what else can we be doing and that leads you then to more of your core part of your business that we found yes cc just one last thing which i want to say is the baby boomers have transitioned their money and most uh, most of them are now passing it on to the next generation Mm -hmm. So Canada is going to witness the richest young generation they have ever seen in the history, in their history, in our history. So I think this is a good time for us to even get them involved into learning about philanthropy. And also some of them are going to get into like, you know, tech companies making a lot of money. And why not build legacies along with that, you know, because one life can impact many. And that's the story. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Cece, and we so appreciate your contribution, and you really are a north in the compass to so many advisors, not just in your practice, but in the community, and uh, we should continue to do great things together.
and thank I want to thank I want to thank both of you guys for being on. Okay, we're going to continue yeah. now, and if as we go along, if there are some things that you have some uh, some insights or things you want to add to what we're doing, we greatly appreciate it. Thanks. Great. So what we're going to go now, uh, everybody, is we're, we're going to talk about why we got together, which is 10 steps to become an entrepreneurial philanthropic advisor. And this isn't just for your advisory business, but hopefully it's something you can take with you and communicate to other business owners and entrepreneurs and incorporated professionals, anybody who's interested in, in, in really creating a legacy amongst their business and where it's not only doing something great for the future, you're actually generating business today, which of course, in this competitive world, we wanna develop business together. So the very first thing as Cece and I were saying is you have to define your why. What is your why? Like, you know, what are you passionate about? You know, is it lifting people out of poverty? Is it education? Is it helping children reach their full potential like, like Anthony's doing? Uh, is it research on diseases? Whatever the case might be, figure out what it is that you really speaks to you and say, this is something that I want to do something about. As you said, if, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. So if you love something, you want to do something to make the difference, it's amazing. Like the world has this way of helping you suddenly meet the right person or be in the right place or find the right avenues or the right teachers. So the first thing is define your why. And I'm talking about as a professional or as a business owner. The second thing is dream big. If you had the means to give away an audacious amount of money, how much money would you like to give away to something that you're passionate about? A lot of us think very small and that's okay. There's small ball also hitting singles, 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 doubles leads to lots of runs. But, you know, we have to dream a little bit. And they say that if you're hitting your targets every year, it might be that your targets are too low, right? We want, we want to shoot for the sky, shoot for the sun and hit the moon. So dream big. One of the things you might want to say to yourself or to people that you meet is, you know, what charities are you passionate about? And let them say it's probably something, you know, colitis, their sister had colitis or cancer or, or a university or program they're very grateful for. And now you understand what's really meaningful for them. And then say, if you could give a million dollars to a charity and it didn't cost you anything, would you? Yeah. And what charity would you give it to? So if there's a way we could show you to give a million dollars to something you care about and you could do it for pennies or on a cash flow neutral basis or just a very efficient way, is that something you'd be interested in? Chances are somebody would say they would be and that now gives you the permission to talk to them about some of the planning. But dream big. Our, we dream big. We want to create a billion dollars a year. We've done 120 million just over the last two years. We're, we're sort of on our way. So uh, hopefully you should also dream big and figure out, you know, if it's a million dollars or as CC is saying, $25 million, that's called dreaming big. The third point, you have to make it real. So one of the ways that we say that you do this is if you're a business owner, start by making it happen by committing to allocate a certain percentage of your net or gross income or annual profits to charity. So in our world, I'm an Orthodox Jewish person. We have something called tzedakah and we have to give miser. It's also known as tithing. So we're supposed to give 10% of our money. And by the way, it's interesting. You know, you're not allowed to test God, but our tradition says that when it comes to charity, you can test God. Say, I'm giving you this money. You know, I know it's a lot. You know, it seems like, but you're allowed to test and you actually see the results come back. And people who are part of this see it come back in, in, in a multifolded. So uh, figure out what percentage you want to put aside and aim as high as you can, because this is something that you're going to be using not only for charity, but also to promote your business. Because the more you donate, the more you can sprinkle it around or really establish yourself as a leader for a particular charity or for a particular community. So, so far we've talked about your why. We've talked about dreaming big, and now we've talked about making it real. But the next thing we want to talk about is putting structures in place. You know, people know about giving money to charity directly. 
They also know about creating um, a, a, a foundation, let's say a, a private foundation, which has some uh, cost to set up and annual reporting. And it's really for people who are putting away a substantial amount of money, of, let's say $2 million, and, and, and they want to manage it. Or what they can do is they can set up something called a donor advised fund. The acronym is a DAF, D-A-F, Donor Advice Fund. And these are basically piggybacking community foundations like the Toronto Foundation, the Jewish Foundation, the Berry Foundation. It could be Canada Gives, Abundance, Benefaction. The banks all have donor advice funds as well. And you're borrowing their governance and compliance but you're putting your named family foundation underneath that. It doesn't require a lot of money. It could be anywhere from $500 to $25,000 of charitable money to get that set up. But now you have a cash register in place that you can use that money with only getting one receipt for that donation. And you can donate cash, appreciated securities, life insurance policies. But that money that's sitting there can now be distributed at your, your at your desire to any registered charities in Canada over a period of time or right away. So it would be really a great for you to set up your own donor advice fund for yourself personally. And it would be great to set up a donor advice fund for your company. I have four. I have two donor advice funds personally, but we also have two donor advice funds for our company. And we use that as the place to give money to charities that we're working with. So if, if you want to start off even small and sort of test how a donor advice fund works, I would really highly recommend going to mycharityfund.ca, mycharityfund.ca. It's an amazingly easy to navigate donor advice fund that you can have right on your computer and distribute money to any charities that you want. So the money there is not invested if you have a, a pool of, of your money. It's just money that you're going to have available, but you're only getting one receipt and not having to rely on getting receipts all over the place. And if you're a if you let's say you're somebody who wants to manage your money still, the banks have donor advised funds where your advisor can still manage that money, or you can go to Canada Gives. Denise Caston Gay has created an incredible structure there for people who are in the finance business who are not necessarily part of the banks to actually be able to manage clients' assets under management with charitable money. So start off by putting structures in place. That's number four. Number five is start gifting assets strategically. Unfortunately, today in Canada, most people are still just giving cash, checks, and credit cards, which in fact is the most cost and tax inefficient way to give. There are about 20 different ways to give that are more efficient, starting with the donation of appreciated public securities, stock, ETFs, mutual funds, segregated funds, any of those that have grown on those are non-registered. If you were to cash them in, you'd, in Ontario, you'd have to pay 27% of the gains that you've made in those as capital gains taxes. But if you donate those to your donor advised fund or directly to charity in kind, you get a charitable receipt for the market value and there's absolutely no capital gains taxes. That means any of your clients right now who are just giving cash checks or credit cards, tell them, stop, don't cash that check. And if you're a charity and you're taking big money from donors, your major donors, tell them, stop, we're not going to cash that check. I know you won't have your job for very long, but why not trigger this conversation around donating more strategically? And there are other ways to give as well. We have a, a, a one pager called 20 ways to make more generous gifts you know, at, at more cost and tax effective ways. So look at it that way, gift assets strategically. Number six, this is the part I really get, love. Once you figured out what your why is and what you're passionate about, let's get your staff involved. Let them champion some of your ideas where it goes across your organization and your organization is known for giving. It could be to a hospital, it could be to a, a cause, uh, that you care about, uh, a health cause, a research cause, whatever it is, but make sure to get your board involved and they understand that this is what we're doing. Get your senior leadership team, get your employees, 
get them all excited about contributing to this much larger goal. And then perhaps create a matching program. Why not give them all, you know, $600 or $500 matching where they could put in $600. And now they've got $1,200 to give to charity directly or to contribute to the, your, comp, your company donor advised fund to create a bigger pool for giving. But it's a beautiful way to get, you know, we're always looking for to how do we acquire or, or, or attract good people? How do we get them to stay with our organization? There's such a, a, a glut in terms of getting good people and, and now costs a lot of money for payrolls, et cetera. But if you're a company that's doing stuff for charity and they're actually getting charitable money that they can give away to causes they care about, that's a great way of making you very, very different. And perhaps create a survey for your employees, find out what's important to them and match whatever they give, as we said. So it's a, it's a beautiful idea. You could also consider setting up insurance policies. You know, right now, Canada Life came out at the end of March with the first charitable insurance policy in Canada called My Par Gift. What's unique about it, it's a one premium payment only you get a charitable receipt for that and your gift is anywhere between five to 20 times larger than the net cost of that one premium so that's one great thing but the other thing is that it also if, if the charity would like because now the policy is owned by the charity it produces dividends and those dividends can be paid out to charity every year so now there's actually a gift every year to charity and not just waiting for somebody to go bye-bye. The other thing is the cash surrender value in the policy because it's owned by the charity is really owned by the charity and they can access that money almost like as a line of credit. So there's ways to utilize that as well. Why not encourage every one of your employees to take out a Mar My Par gift? It's the lowest amount is $10,000. So $10,000, imagine they put in five, you put in five, or you put in 10, and they can give it to charity. It's going to make a lot of noise. That's for sure. There's lots of great PR around that. So that's getting your staff involved. The next is really talking to your suppliers. We all have suppliers. It could be our coffee machine. It could be our fax machine. It could be our cleaning of the, the office, uh, travel agents, accountants, lawyers that we work with, talk to them about what you're trying to do around creating a charitable um, a, a, a strategy for your company around those things that you're passionate about. You know, if, if you tell them that you tithe your money or you're giving back to charity, I guarantee if you go to them and say, listen, I give you a lot of business, you know, you're, I appreciate your service and there's no obligation on your part, but what we'd really like you to do is consider tithing or giving a percentage of the money that you're making from us to our charitable foundation, to our donor advised fund. You get the charitable receipts, you get the tax benefit. We just get the honor of being able to distribute that money to the charities that we care about. I will tell you that nine times out of 10, nobody would say no to that. And you could actually create a lot of money that way that you would normally not even be thinking about that's sort of just sort of sitting on the side and, 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 and it'll get them perhaps excited about doing something charitable as well. But one thing's for sure, it's going to differentiate you from all the other suppliers that they currently have. And you're going to be able to do something very, very special that way. Number, so that's talk to your suppliers. Next, let's talk to your clients. You know, get some help to figure out what's the best way to communicate outside of your company and outside of your suppliers to your clients. That this is something that should be ingrained on your website. It should be part of your business cards. It should be part of any of your letter and your communications. Our goal is, is in CC is to create $25 million a year for charity. Wow. How'd they do that? How are you doing that? And communicate that story. It could be done through posts that you're making on LinkedIn. It could be going ahead and it could be through emails. It could be through a newsletter on charity that you're creating for your firm. It could be from uh, just, you know, the fact that you're going to be now sponsoring all sorts of, let's say, charitable events and having a table and inviting your top clients you know how many times do they want to go play golf how many times do they want to get tickets to a very uh, ineffective hockey team not to name 
one in my city, you know, or certainly like baseball, but going to those events, you know, it's a bit of a yawn, but going to a charitable event, having a great speaker, being around other people who are, as Cece said, are people who are passionate. It's, it's a great thing. So figure out a way to communicate this going forward to your clients and get them involved as well. And then the last thing is really integrate it all which is really charity, you shouldn't just be given as an afterthought or a sporadic check. It should be planned. That way you can make a much bigger impact and channel money that would otherwise have gone to taxes towards your favorite charitable causes instead. So fundamentally, any kind of an approach that integrates your business and personal financial planning with a charitable cause enables you to contribute to society and allows people to give more efficiently and hopefully at a larger amount. Now, I just want to say in, with, with Anthony and, and, um, and Cece here that people get very excited by this. And I've gotten advisors and charities, they get really jacked and it's wonderful. But I always tell people, don't quit your day job right? This is not something to do full time. If you do that, you'll be very excited, but you'll see your revenue go wah, 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 wah. We don't want that. It's something that has to be part of your planning. And, and, and it starts if you don't want to do it, right? Because you're busy. So then delegate it to somebody in your office who can actually start this thing moving forward. But the point is, is the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to ignore it. There's just so much that, you know, you sort of will lose out in the process. And I just want to talk to you about, so that's, that's kind of the 10 steps. I hope that was helpful and interesting. I just want to show you and talk to you about a few people that I know who've done some amazing things. This is one of our advisors, been part of Power of Platinum, Andy Kovacs. He's an advisor with, with Sun Life. You know, here's two of his clients. They gave a million dollar insurance gift to St. Joseph's Hospital Foundation, where I'm on the advisory board there too. And they are in the real estate business and they're always looking to meet people and develop their brand. And by giving this charity, which to them was important because their babies, their children were born there. It was a way for them to give back, make a huge statement, and now be able to promote that and show that to their clients, their suppliers, and their staff in a very, very cost and tax and efficient way. I have another advisor, Joe Curry, who heard me speak at the Canada Sales Congress back, I think, in 2015 and asked me for help around building his business. And one of the things I suggested is, Joe, uh, I want you and your wife, they're in their early 30s, to take out a million dollar life insurance policy, a 20 pay, joint last to die policy. The cost of that is, was only about 7,000 a year for 20 years. And I said, who's the biggest charity in your neighborhood? And that was the Peterborough Hospital Foundation. He donated that possible policy to the Peterborough Hospital Foundation. So his $7,000 premium got a charitable receipt, which means it's only costing him $3,500 a year times 20 years, that's 70,000 to be recognized as a million dollar giver. He's now invited to all of the major giver events. He's actually now the co-chair of the Young President's Council there. He's changed his whole practice at, around philanthropy at a very reasonable cost. We also had a very young real estate, um, a real estate developer who was trying to break into the real estate market as well and needed to meet more people. And we encouraged him, he was single, to give a million dollar gift to a downtown Tor Toronto hospital. Not only did they appreciate it, but they put his name on the legacy wall and he's invited to the major donors events every year. That's for people who write a check for $100,000 and he's getting in for about $2,500 net per year in terms of his, his cost of his premium. And now he's engaged with a lot of people who are prime uh, prospects for him with his, his business. Last other person you should look in, in uh, on LinkedIn, also another member of our Power of Platinum, a fellow named Mark Bull, Bull Financial. Great guy, been in the business for over 30 years and has really done a great job of integrating philanthropy into his practice. He just gave a million dollar gift to a local hospital there, sponsors golf tournaments, changed his branding around, and he's loving it. He's meeting so many people around charity and really teaching them how to be very, very successful. So, so these are just some of the ideas I would suggest. And then we'll have some, by the way, 
anybody who has questions, you can please put them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. We're almost done. Just some sort of next steps that I think would be important. You know, I have something called the 48 hour rule. And that is if something touched you or inspired you over the last 49 minutes, do something about it within 48 hours. Otherwise, it'll be forgotten and you'll be on to the next thing. Just one thing. Think of one thing you want to do. If you're not connected with me yet on LinkedIn, please do. We're always posting around charitable activities and stories and cases and ways for people to give better. Uh, if you'd like, reach out to me. Send me an email to mark at wealthinsurance.com. We have a tax letter digest we've been writing since 2011 that has over 100 publications on all of these things that we've been speaking about, or at least explaining what how what insurance does as opposed to what it is. And we also have one pagers on many of these uh, case studies where you can understand in one page sort of, you know, what did somebody have as a challenge and what was the the results. We also have a, a newsletter, a newsletter called Charity Matters, which we send out month uh, every couple of months, which I think would be very helpful. The other thing you might want to do is consider joining CAGP, Canadian Association of Gift Planners, which is a national organization. It doesn't cost a lot to join, but you'll be part of an organization with lots of donors and lots of charities and lots of advisors that all of us are together. We've all drank the Kool-Aid. It just is a great way to keep inspired and going along. The other thing I suggest is, as, uh, as, as Cece was saying, or Anthony was saying, is consider getting your MFAP, your Master Financial Advisor in Philanthropy. This is a designation that was created by the CAGP Knowledge Bureau and uh, Brad Offman over at Spire Philanthropy. And, and in a short period of time, you can be an expert on philanthropy. I was on the faculty. I do part of the, the, the curriculum. It's a great investment of time, very short period of time, and not at a great cost. As Anthony and Cece have done, please consider joining our Power of Platinum mentoring coaching program. Our next cohort is going to be likely in November. You can go to powerplatinum.com to sign up, but we know for a fact that the results have been incredible and we want to try to help more advisors be great. And the last thing is don't ignore it. Like, you, you know, yeah, you can learn about it, but we collaborate with advisors across the country. Most of our business is collaborating with clients across advisors across the country to help be that expert in this area of strategic philanthropy using life insurance in the estate planning process. So please reach out to us. Let's talk about cases. Let's work together. We can do good and do well at the same time. And lastly, consider your own legacy. You know, there's so many ways to give and they can be done often just by converting taxes into charity. And I encourage everybody to look into this and find out more. And the one thing I say is, just don't ignore it. And I just want to wrap up. We'll look if there's any questions. But CC Anthony, I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Is there anything else that you just want to add or say before we sign off for today? Um, I, I want to echo CC's point. Thanks, Mark, for the platform and the opportunity here to speak. Uh, in addition to that, thanks a lot for the, the information that you've disseminated over the last couple of years that I've been following you at least. I'm pretty sure you've been doing it before that um, because it's really been helpful in terms of changing my practice, changing the conversations I've had in my practice. Power Platinum is huge. If you guys are on the fence, just jump over and do it. Um, I've done it um, my second time doing a Power Platinum. And in fact, I've built a lot of good relationship, great relationships from Power Platinum. In fact, some of the folks who I used to be in groups with, I still speak with them and we still call each other and what are you doing and what's working, what's not working. Is this you know? So it's it's a it's a great um, it's a, it's a great group of um, advisors to be around. Um, and yeah, thanks thanks again, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you, Anthony. CC, any last words? Last words are for the advisors who are listening in. Go find your why, and I would suggest, as Anthony and you know, these gentlemen are doing an amazing job at Power of Platinum. Find your why and go be amazing, as Jim says. And thank you very much, Mark. You know with Without that added knowledge, uh, we wouldn't have been able to have fun in life. So, so happy. Well, look at, I appreciate all the lovely comments. And if anybody has any questions, uh, please reach out. You can send an email to market wealthinsurance.com or send a, a private message to me on LinkedIn. 
was great having everybody here. We had over 100 people register, so that shows you know the interest in this subject. Our next philanthropy Friday will be in two weeks' time. I don't know the date, but we'll certainly put the post. And um, and that's it for today. So thank you for joining us on Philanthropy Friday. Have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend. And look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.